the Concert Grand of 1957 was the first stereo consumer offering ever made. So this was the first ever stereo? This was the first consumer stereo. Okay. And you had your little glass door. Now the funny thing about stereo is that they couldn't call it stereo. It doesn't say stereo anywhere in here. Mm -hmm. And as a little aside, those little diamonds are your AM civil defense during the Cold War information radio stations. Now on the front here, we have a speaker there, a speaker there, and record storage. Over here, we have the stereo reel-to-reel. -reel. Two channel, that says stereo there. It just doesn't over there. It's awesome having the built-in reel-to-reel. So I assume on the other side it's the uh, record mm -hmm. deck. Yep. And it says Colaro which was a British record player manufacturer. Ah. Just as a little piece of trivia there for the home team. Now this had, because it was a high-end offering, this thing weighs about 190 pounds, a little more. It has a Telecron movement, which was also a big technological advancement because it was a constant Move, a, a mechanical movement. It wasn't a, a quartz movement, but it was a mechanical movement that gave you a sweep second hand and kept incredibly accurate time. Okay, so it would be direct drive, but then it would be well, controlled by this. Yeah, but this, this is a, your standard record player, but this is a timer to turn the whole stereo on or off. So you could use this thing as an alarm clock in the morning. Oh, cool. <laughs> turn it on, start playing something. Yeah. And, and what year was this out in? This is 1957. 58, stereo became an option, but in 57 there was no stereo. Now if you look to the back, you will see the two 15-inch woofers, and you've got your horn driver there and your horn driver there. This amp, they call it a bi-amp chassis, but basically it has two channels. It runs 30 watts to drive those two big monsters, and then it takes another um, 10 watts to drive that tweeter, and then it has a second amplifier chassis to drive channel two. So the only thing that comes out of the stereo is the reel-to-reel. -reel. Okay. They later made and sold as an addition in 58 a second channel amplifier so you could get stereo out of your record player. Ah, so it's it, like a later add-on. Yeah, so if you look at your record player here, where's the record player wire? Yeah, there's record player channel one going into the amp. That's record player channel two. Notice it's not connected to anything. So the record player was stereo, but the system can only play stereo because they did a rush to market, a mad rush to market. So if you look at all these interconnects, notice there aren't any real RCA cables. Mm -hmm. It's a bunch of weird, uh, this thing is daisy chained together, it's awful. It is absolutely positively awful the way it's all daisy chained together. Terrible. But Robert at the Audio Exchange restored this amp and that amp, and I've just gotta do the tuner and then maybe degrease and regrease the record player, and there's a place in town that can do the reel-to-reel. -reel. But once that's done, this is a complete working, not yet stereo converted unit. So it's historically significant because, like those old IBMs throwing away the Rev 1, Rev 2 biases, most people either converted these to stereo or got rid of them. So this is in the original? This is original as found. 